Hey guys, so now that I got this Pixel, it's got a much better camera than my other devices, so I'm going to give you a much better look at my power supplies and my little components box over there. So here's the LED driver 2.0. We got the two batteries in it that go in the top there. That's the 2 volt, 3 volt switch. And that's the capacitor on off switch. Mm, zoom in a little bit here. And we got our power switch. <laughs> it's funny, it's a great big 250 volt um, switch for a high power thing. It was out of a computer power supply. Yet I'm using it for a little 3 volt LED power. <laughs> LED power supply. And with those connections are the connections that lead to the plug. Okay, that one's the negative. And that one is the positive. And those go over here. The top row is the positive. The bottom row is the negative. Well, this way. Bottom row is negative. Top row is positive. Capacitor kill switch. So, if the capacitor... That works if the capacitor is on or off. So, the capacitor is off right now. On. Off. When it's off. And when you want to turn the capacitor back on... But you don't want the LED to turn on and then fade away when you turn it on. Before you turn it on, you press that. It'll get rid of whatever's in there. And when you turn it on, it'll be completely out. Oh, and we got a power button on the side of the power switch. That does the same thing, but just like a couple of my power supplies, it's just a flash button. It makes it go on and off rapidly. Because this switch, well, it's not really the easiest to press <laughs> you can't really go too fast with it so over here here's the components box a small one that's miscellaneous stuff we got some buzzers and a bunch of fuses and an electromagnet and buttons these are switches that just spring back automatically these ones are pretty cool because they've got a little thing on the top of them. Most of them, like this one here, are just black pieces of plastic. But those ones have a rubber thing on the top that makes it a lot nicer to press. This is a quadruple two-way switch. <laughs> Much like this one that I put into this power supply right there, just smaller, and it springs back automatically. That one, it stays at whatever position you set it to. Diodes. Single diodes. Well, this isn't a single diode. I guess I shouldn't be in there. But single diodes. These are all just, you know, single diodes. One diode. Individual diodes. These really thick ones are high voltage ones. This is my thickest one. It's really huge. And all the little ones are average ones. And what's that little IC doing in there? What is that IC? Let's see. Can I read it? I can't read it right now. I'll have to shine a really bright light on it. These are just pieces of metal. I usually make those, or I usually use those to make battery connections better. These are dual diodes. These are two diodes in one case. They look like a transistor or a triac, but they're not. This thing's got to make up its mind about the focus. Jeez. I'm looking for one that's got the symbol. There, this one has the symbol. You see that? It's got the two diodes facing towards it. And that's a little schematic of what's inside of it. And that's what all of these are. They're all the same thing. Most of them are shot key diodes. They're not just re normal rectifier diodes. They're Most of them are shot key diodes. These are switches. They hold the position you set them to. This is much like that. Well, this is much like this, but four of them. <laughs> and ones like these. Slide switches. This one's got three positions. It's a, a two-way switch, just like most of them. Except it's also got an off position. Um, we got another um, push button in here. That holds its position. Ouch. The terminals are sharp as frick. And 
in here, there's a bunch of stuff. Over here is capacitors. These are, there's just a couple of them in here, just in case. Most of my capacitors are in a Ferrero box like these. Like that. Over in my room. Uh, some capacitors. These are a thousand or more microfarads. You see that one's 3300. And they're 10 volts or lower. This one is 6.3. This is a dual seven segment display. I've got the pinout for that on my Chromebook over there. And this is a red filter for LEDs. And that is a little tiny incandescent bulb. Nine volts, that one is. Well, those two little tiny capacitors, those three little tiny capacitors are less than a thousand microfarads, but those are just for, just in case. And we got Integrated circuits, ICs. These are little circuits that are built for you. This one is a UTC-2025. That's an audio amplifier. These all do completely different things. This one, I can't read. That's the one from before. This one is a... Uh... I can't read that one either. Come on, just give me a random IC. This one is a timer. That one was out of that toaster that I took apart. And in here is resistors. We got a microphone. This changes resistance with air pressure. Got a bunch of variable resistors. Same change your resistance when you turn them. And we got fixed value resistors. They're just normal old resistors. And LEDs. Well, lights. Light bulbs. In here, miscellaneous stuff can't be sorted into the other categories, so they just go in here. These have my neon bulbs. Get off! There we go. These have my little neon bulbs in it. Focus! There we go. <laughs> little neon bulb. There are three of them in there. You can see the really blackened one over there. I got that one I just picked up out of a... Uh... What was it? A toaster oven. This is an, a little, uh, oh, for Christ's sake, another little incandescent. It's out of a flashlight, an old flashlight. Move back to improve focus. Yes, I know. Shut up. This is a little red LED. Well, a couple of them on a little tiny circuit board. And in here's red LEDs. All the rectangular ones are old. They're 90s or 80s. And all these round ones are modern ones. Focus. There we go. And this one is my super bright red. <laughs> all the others are diffused. And well, these aren't diffused, but they're not red red. They're infrared. These are... These make a frequency of radiation that our eyes can't see. Cameras, though, can see it. Um, is that on the wrong way? Nope. Why is that not turning on? Oh, there we go. Oh, it was on before. <laughs> I just turned it off. But yeah, you can see it. But I can't. I cannot see that. Yeah, that's the infrared ones. I've got three of those. I took them out of a drone controller. And these are... Anywhere in the spectrum between orange and yellow. So we've got a couple orange ones here. We've got an amber one. And these are also amber ones. These little ambers and that little red came out of an RC helicopter. I'm pretty sure these infrareds came out of the controller for the same RC helicopter. And here's green ones. There's a rectangular one in here. I got that green rectangular one. And... Where is it? Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to grab this light. There. This little red one and that green one, the rectangular ones, were out of a charger for a camcorder. And these are blue ones. I've only got two. I want more of them. They're a really nice color. And these are whites. <laughs> I've got tons of them. And I also got a few little diffusers thrown in here as well these were sorted at one point 
These were cool white, and these were warm white, but this wall is not tall enough. And they just got mixed up. A lot of warm white ones got went into the cool whites. The warm whites, most of them are 5mm. These look like super brights, but they're not. If you notice, their lens is reversed. It goes inside of them instead of a bump coming out. That reflects some of the light out the sides. So it shines out everywhere e evenly. And there we go. It looks very yellow on the camera, but it's actually warm white. Man, that looks really yellow. Look at that. <laughs> What's with this camera? I think the saturation's a little too high. <laughs> but yeah, that's the warm white. This is a cool light. These look very bluey. I got the reason I have so many of those is because I took apart a light strip. Like one of one of these. Oh, we have two of these ones. Two of the light strings that those lights came out of. Hold on. Here. We had two of these. One of them, the wire got chewed up by a mouse or a rat or something. And yeah, I took it apart. I took all the lights out of it. So yeah, that's those. Oh, I forgot to put this diode bridge over here. That's going into the multi-diode section. And the capacitor makes it fade away slowly. We got 2-volt mode and 3-volt mode. Those use... That uses a resistor. That little resistor right there, that green thing. That's a 100 ohm. So it lowers it down just enough to power a 2-volt LED. I've only got a few 2-volts in here. The red ones in here are 2 volts. The one with this wire on it. Oh, never mind. Oh, here it is. This is a red 2 volt. It used to have two wires on it, but one broke. There we go. Switch that to 2 volt mode. Click, and there we go. It's a 2-volt LED. I switch that to 3-volt mode, it'll break. <laughs> it'll fail. and blow up. And yeah, those are the LEDs. Oh, and these diffusers are for 2mm LEDs. These diffusers came off a light strip that them cool whites came off of. They came off the other one of these. <laughs> and yeah, that's the LED driver 2.0, and this is the components box. Well, I guess I could diffuse an LED. Well, I guess I don't really have any 2mm undiffused LEDs. All of my 2mm are diffused. And a little orange one. <laughs> yeah. Man, that works a lot better than I thought it did. It diffuses it very nicely. <laughs> It's nice. It, that looks really cool. Again, it looks very yellow on the camera. It's orange to me. <laughs> Let's power some more of these LEDs. Here's the red super bright. Oh, I just realized I had it on Tuval mode. I'll put it... I'll put that orange one back in and put the diffuser on it. But first, click, there we go. Mm. Two volt mode, when you put two volt mode onto a three volt LED, it just makes it dimmer. Get on. There we go, this isn't the best plug, but it's the only one I have that can fit LEDs like that. Yeah, that's nicer, it's quite brighter. That looks very amber to the camera. Oh, and look at that. When I tap on it, it can lower the brightness and see it. <laughs> That's so cool. I like this new phone. <laughs> I'm finding out all the cool stuff about it, because I've never really had a new device before. And yeah, so now let's use this little red super bright. 
and yeah. <laughs> it's pretty freaking bright. And it's not diffused at all. It shines it out like a flashlight out the top. It's pretty dim everywhere, but shine it right in the middle. It glares all to frick. Very nice and bright. These diffusers don't fit, but whatever. Oh, wait. I think I have some diffusers that might fit. Christmas tree. We don't really take this down. We just move it. There, got me a 5mm LED diffuser. And look at that. <laughs> Very nice. I'm planning on... I'm gonna keep that in here. I'm planning on 3D printing some diffusers. I've got them... Uh, I'm... I've got the Tinkercad file for them. I've designed them in Tinkercad, but I haven't gotten them 3D printed yet. Here's, uh... 5 by 7 by 2 millimeter ni 1991 red LED. And here is, I don't know what year, but it's a 5 by 7 by 2. That one I just showed you, I was wrong. It's actually a 5 by 5 by 8 by 2, not a 5 by 7 by 2. It's 5, wa five millimeters wide. Two millimeter stick. Focus on the LED. There we go. Two millimeters wide. Seven millimeters tall. Focus on the LED. Holy crap. There we go. Frack. And that other one is eight millimeters tall. This one's only seven. These ones are diffused a bit better than that other one. This one is a little clearer. There's a two millimeter. I this is one of my most recent LEDs I've got. It was out of a mm, walkie-talkie charger. I've got two of these identical. Frank, get back here. There we go. I've got a bunch more red diffused. A little two millimeter diffused red. I'm gonna diffuse it even more <laughs> now let's grab the amber one and there we go it looks very yellow to the camera when I shine it's a super bright so it shines at the top like that when I shine it right at the camera, it does definitely look amber, but on the side, it looks pretty yellow. Let's stick the diffuser on it. And there we go. Very nice. <laughs> and I already showed you them little orange ones. It's really difficult for me to show you this one, but I'll try my best. Got them to work. <laughs> There's two little tiny little amber ones. And now on to the green ones. Man, this turned this video really is a lot different than I thought it was. I thought it was just gonna be showing you a close up of my power supplies, but no, I turned it into showing you all my electronic stuff again, but with a better camera version. <laughs> Here's a super bright green. None of these greens are true green. They're quite on the they're in between the green and the yellow on the spectrum. They're a very limey green. Can you get in the power? Go in the plug. There we go. Finally, frack. All right. Yeah, this is a super bright. Yeah, a very nice lime green. Or as other people will call it, charteroos green. I call it lime green. And that's the same light. <laughs> Let's go and grab a whole bunch of them out of here. Get out of the yellows and oranges section. 
There, I've grabbed a bunch of little green ones. All these are the same. Look at how tiny these little ones are. <clears throat> very, very short two millimeter. And they're very hard to get working. We got it working. Ah, where did I say that? But yeah, them terminals are just a couple of millimeters long. So it's really, really difficult. This one is just ever so slightly diffused. It's diffused just a little bit. Oh, never mind. It's diffused a bit more than I thought it was. Let's throw a diffuser onto it. <laughs> uh, the, the light stayed in. <laughs> Two millimeter diffuser. Now I've got a couple of two millimeter greens. Mm, frick, get over here. Frick. It's very similar to the one I just showed you. Hmm. And those are the green ones. Well, some of the green ones. Oh, I should show you the, the old one. Focus on the components box, not my hand. Come on. There we go. I'm going to turn the brightness down manually. Now onto the blue ones. A long time ago, I had a diffused 2mm blue, and oh my god, it was so bright! It was so bright! Yeah, these are all, these are super bright blues. These ones are also as crazy bright. Blue ones in general seem real, real bright. There's something about blue ones. They're just, they're just brighter. That's very nice. <laughs> Alright. And I showed you the white ones. And yeah, that's the components box, the small one. Oh, and I put some tape on the back as a little as like a replacement for the broken hinges. Now let's move this out of the way. This phone's starting to get pretty warm. Control panel. Oh, this is a, get over here. Here we go. Oh, and this is a little light um four leds hooked up in series on a pcb and you could see how it's how they're in series there are some little jumper wire slots on the sides there when you put a jumper wire through those it turns the green ones off why you'd want to do that i don't know but yeah here's here's this the control panel and this you attach to a power supply and it gives you a whole bunch of things you can do with it. So you've got bare wire connectors. You put your positive wire into there and you screw it shut. Your negative in there and you screw it shut. Or if it's AC, it doesn't matter because there's no polarity in AC. And you got your input plugs. Here, this is a special plug that are on some of my power supplies and some of my components. This is an adapter plug for, you know adapters <laughs> that have that plug and here's your output plug that's the male type of that and this is goes through rectifier or doesn't 
I say go through rectifier and doesn't instead of just AC and DC, because you can plug DC into it, and both of these would be DC. So yeah. And you got polarity switch, and it switches the positive and negative. Oh, no, this isn't your output plug. This is. And this is for the bare wire connector. When you put your bare wires in there and you screw it shut, you gotta plug this into there. And yeah. This, the rectifier in this is superior to all of my other ones. This is, ah. Uh, this is the only homemade one I've got that has a full wave rectifier. Well, it's not exactly homemade, because this was all put together. Well, not completely, but most of this was all put together by a company. And, but then I took it out and I slapped it on a piece of cardboard. <laughs> and I added a switch and a switch. <laughs> this cuts off the input and it's through on and off. This is the only one I've got that you turn it on and off with the input, the 120 wires. All the other ones, like this one, the switch is on the other one. Oh, well, then again, there's not much choice on this, but like that one up there. But yeah, I cut an input wire and I put a switch in between it, and I cut an output wire and put a switch into it. This is a push to break switch. This cuts the circuit when you press it. Your output wires is a bare wired one. Stick that in there. This um, has a superior rectifier to all my others except this. Well, actually, it's better than this one, too. This has got a full wave, and a 3300 microfarad capacitor. Now, one is a full wave as well, but it's only got a 2200 um, microfarad. That's a half wave, and that's a half wave. And that is a half wave. Half waves are not as good as full waves. Full waves are a lot better, but half waves use only one diode. Full waves have to use four. However, like the one under there and the one in the components box, I've got um, diode bridges as a single component. You've got on off switch and uh also an on off switch but that's so you can turn it on and off quickly just the same thing as this here and this here now get off of my freaking chromebook charger there we go eight volt this one is my second one, the one I made after this. This one I put together myself. I took this out of a cassette player. I took this, uh, I'm pretty sure I just got that from my dad. My dad gave that to me. It's a wall switch just like this one. Except this is a rocker switch and this one is a flick switch. This one, all these components were mine and I connected them all with wires. Got a rectifier diode, rectifier capacitor, it's a 4700. That was my biggest capacitor I had until I got this monster right here. <laughs> it's a 75 volt 10,000. This is your AC, DC switch. You got AC and DC, and this is the capacitor switch. Capacitor on and off. And your output plug here. This wire is tangled around everything. I'm gonna plug that in. There we go. Turn that off. And capacitor on. And there we go. There's that. I 
turn the capacitor off, click, it gets a little dimmer, because now they're flashing really quickly. I would quickly switch this over to slow motion, but, oh, you know what, I'll do that. And there you go, there's a 116 speed video of them. And it's exactly the same thing when you turn it on to AC mode, they're flashing exactly the same. Because they're they're LEDs, so they're diodes. So they only let the electricity through one way. And when you switch it to DC capacitor off, then that's your diode. And but when it's on AC these are your diodes, so it's exactly the same. And unplug that. For frick's sake, hold on. Get out of there. There we go. Sorry, I just needed two hands for that. So yeah, that's, that's this one here. And now, I already showed you most of this one. This is the 9-volt one. Oh, goodness. That plug is almost coming off. There we go. So, yeah, you put your input plug in there. Just so The wire on this is separate. You can unplug the wire and take it out and put it in. And it's got an outlet on it, so you're able to plug in another power supply to it and have two power supplies hooked on one outlet. I wish I had more of those plugs and more of them wires. <laughs> I took this and this and this out of a CD player radio boom box. And I was given this by a math teacher in grade 7 who knew I liked electronics and he had that sitting in a drawer. He didn't know what to do with it, so he gave it to me. And this, I got out of a heater. That was a tilt sensor for a heater. That used to have a ball bearing on it. Oh, wait a minute, I've got another one of these, hold on. Never mind, I could not find it. But yeah, there was a ball bearing on it. That was pressed as switch. And when you tilted it, the ball bearing would come off of the switch. And it would turn it off. But... I hooked it up in reverse, so now when it's pressed, it turns off. When that plug is connected to that pin, it's the other way. It'd be on, off. It's a two-way switch. It's got your common, which is the bottom, and right now it comes out this output, and you press it down, it comes out that output. And yeah, this one does not have an AC mode. Why is why is my Chromebook warm? Oh, charging. <laughs> That's why. Move that over there. And here's what the frick? Oh, and this is my twelve volt one. This one is the simplest looking. <laughs> the le the least cool looking. And he's got the transformer. I got that transformer out of the same heater that I got the push to break switch out of that. And we got a big capacitor here. It's uh, 2200, I think. Yes, it is. And we got our switch. And that's off, and AC, and DC. And bare wire output. It's got some very long wires. Positive is white. Halfway rectified, there's our diode. If you notice, there's no solder, because I used solid core wire. Mm. And I covered them terminals up with glue, 
and I taped this on because it was the easiest way. And I stuck, I wrapped the wires around the terminals in here, and then I stuck the terminals through the cardboard so it would hold on real tightly. And I glued over it so you can't touch them and it can't shock you. And I taped this over so it would stay put. Alright, I've hooked it up to the control panel. Plug her in. We've got a cooling fan, and we've attached that to the bare wires, and plugged it in there. And DC mode, and AC mode. It's off, because since this has so much better rectifier in it than this, I switched this to AC, not to DC, so it goes through this thing's rectifier instead of its crappy little rectifier. Now let's plug in a cooling fan. I'm pretty sure this power supply is too much for them little lights, so that's why I grabbed a cooling fan instead. Oh, for frick's sake. I once again need two hands for this. There we go. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's fast. Hmm. <laughs> That's way faster than I thought it was. We do that, now it's AC. <laughs> now it goes much slower and it's vibrating. And off. And yeah, I'm gonna switch this to DC mode. Oh, and switch polarity. There we go. Goes a bit slower because it's not as good of a rectifier. Ryer. Ryer rectifier. Yeah. Mm. I like these fans. Mm. Definitely up there in one of my favorite components. One of my favorite output components along with um, lights. Motors. Eh. Like normal motors that just have a shaft on them. They don't really do much. <laughs> I don't have much use for them. Speakers? Nah. Not really much to do with speakers, other than to launch BBs around. <laughs> you can't really make sound with these, other than... Let's turn on that um 9-volt one. But first, let's take this one off of the control panel. The reason I hooked this one up to the control panel in the first place is because that cooling fan, it's got that plug on it, and this doesn't, this does. So I used that as a plug adapter. See, it's got lots of uses, this little control panel thing. And once again, this is really hard with only one hand. I gotta hold the camera with the other hand. Come on, unscrew. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna go grab the wire for that 9 volt power supply. I have hooked up the, um. Mm, 9 volt one. Let's turn that on. And let's turn that to EC mode, well, non rectified mode. And let's turn that on. And let's switch to polarity. And why isn't it working? Um, excuse me? What's going on? Why is this thing not working? Oh, now it's working. What the frick? I'm weird. Anyway, yeah. Off. On. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, 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 flash, 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 flash. I gotta change the speed of the fan. <laughs> Pull smith <with> modulation. <laughs> I've had to do some repairs to this wire, as you can see. 
it seems a critter found it and he chewed it up a little. And there's little spots in there where you can see the copper in there. And if you can see the copper, that means you can touch the copper. And you don't want to touch the copper when electricity of that amount is going through it. You do not want to touch a wire plugged into an outlet. That will hurt. It probably won't kill you, but it'll hurt. I haven't been shocked directly by 120 volts before, but um, I touched an extension cord that was plugged in outside, and it was raining, and you can feel it. <laughs> you can feel a 60 hertz hum basically go through your arm, <laughs> and it makes you go all numb for a second. It's weird. It's a weird feeling. It's really hard to describe. But yeah. Get off of the lights. Here we go. But those aren't lights, that's a wire. Well, it's the wire for the lights. <laughs> Alright, we're almost done. We got one more power supply to go. And it's the new one. For frick's sake. Alright, and here's this power supply. The 12 or 6 volt one. The double rectifiered. <laughs> this one doesn't make too much power. <laughs> doesn't make very many amps. But it makes an okay amount of volts. 12 volts. Or 6 volts. Let's plug the... Uh... Um, cooling fan into it first. Maybe I can do this with one hand. Let's see. Come on. Non. Oh, it's so hard. My God. All right. Here we go. It's really difficult to plug that in with one hand. Crack. All right. So this one's got off, oh, off, AC, DC inverted, DC normal. By inverted and normal, it's polarity. So on inverted mode, black is positive, red is negative. And on normal, red is positive, black is negative. Alright, so. AC mode. Six volts. <clears throat> the capacitor in there had a bit in it. On. Six volts. Makes a nice breeze. <laughs> oh, I guess I should be showing you this side of the fan. Because you can see that thing spinning. That is colored-ish. It's got half of the circle white and half of it black. Now let's shift it up to 12 volts. Click. Well, that didn't seem to change it much. Oh, yes, it did. Never mind. The camera can't see it very good, but I can. I can definitely see it speeding up and slowing down. And do it easy. As it really slows down. Now it's vibrating. <laughs> Six volts. Half waved. Twelve volts. There, twelve volts. Half wave rectified. It's pretty nice. Nice breeze. I love the amount of air these blow. It's just so perfect. <laughs> It's not too much, it's not too little. It's just perfect. A little nice breeze. I like these cooling fans. <laughs> They're so quiet and they blow a nice breeze and they don't spin super duper ultra fast. There's just one problem with them. They're like digital. 
well, well, no, I don't think they're digital, but they're analog, but they've got some really, really complex circuitry under there. They've got an integrated circuit or two, and a bunch of capacitors, and a bunch of resistors. Little teeny tiny, um, uh, ceramic capacitors. They've got a whole whack of stuff in there. They've got a little CPU in there. <laughs> They've got a processor. And I'm guessing that's why they're so delicate. Because there's so many tiny, tiny components in there. They'll fail if you give them slightly more than what they're supposed to have. <laughs> and yeah, those are all my power supplies running stuff and nice good views of them and yeah well, i guess i should give you a pretty close-up view of this one as well so we've got our two diodes here if you notice they're in opposite polarity and on the they intersect right there and they go into the switch here that's the ac side that connects to Okay, so we've got this switch. It's got the 0 volt, the neutral terminal, and 12 volt and 12 volt terminals. It's got three terminals down there on the bottom. The neutral is connected to this terminal of the switch, and the 12 volts connected to this terminal of the switch, and the common is connected to the intersection of the two diodes. When it's on 12 volt, it's 12 volt. When it's on neutral, it's 6 volts. And we've got the brown wire of this plugged into the negative one, the negative side of it, and the yellow one on the positive side of the diode. The positive, the anode of the diodes are the, no, the cathode of the diodes are the parts with the gray line. So the electricity comes out of them on that side. So... It, this selects, like, nothing. This is your input, or your common. Red, yellow, brown. And these capacitors, yellow and the cathode of that diode, are connected to this capacitor, and brown and the anode of that diode are connected to this capacitor. Those two capacitors, the other terminals of them, are connected to each other and are connected to the other 12-volt terminal of this. And yeah, that's how that one works. <laughs> and yeah, those are all my power supplies. And there were some nice views of them, and there were them running stuff, and there's a, a much nicer view of the components box, and... Yeah, good freaking bye.